Amen. I say welcome back to our Sunday morning worship here at Tower Mark Hall. We're going to just start this time. I want to be a singing line from Tower Mark Hall Party Church, what they will tell us. Why you keep watching on the Hamel? Well, singing pastors talk about this. Which one? Sissing pastors and sing all the same. At this time, we're going to get started with our stand and turn the page number 301. 301. I want you all. Lord, that's a 
sometimes uh, the, the best known were remember, and so all you could do sometimes just find him, you know, in our work from time to more. I mean, one of the part of this man, he, he knows our prayers, and he will therefore know we do not remember. And uh, so he, he is there, and that's why the scripture is said, Holy Spirit goes into secretary. He goes that sometimes to our things that we do not know. Thank you. 
395, 395, he said to him, Must I go and empty handle? 395.
once again, O God, are you able to come here to tell us in one minute? Lord, God, we pray now for the suffering that we are about to take up from your people. Father, God, we pray that the word is heard in your gospel. We pray for the giver and receiver, because in Jesus' name we pray.
in heaven. It says, uh, he, he stood up against God. And God had to kick him out, you see. And so, uh, Satan, to do his infernal work, he has many weapons. And two of those weapons that I'm going to use tonight is disappointment and discouragement. He, had, he may at one time use greed in your heart. You know, some people with greed. But he may have used covetousness. He may have used anger. He may have used uh, malice or false accusations. He, these are all tools of the devil. These are not the things that God will throw at his children. Sometimes he used lust. Sometimes he used evil desire. You know, it just goes on and on. Revenge. You think about any negativity, and you can add that to the arsenal of Satan's weapons. But all of his weapons, I believe, uh, um, uh, I heard one preacher said division was his most powerful weapon. And they are all powerful. But here, as I prepare these notes, as I think on Disappointment and discouragement, I believe that this, this, this is a very powerful weapon. If only he can get the saints of God to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to be discouraged and to be disappointed with over any effort that they may endeavor, he will have stopped the will of God. Because that's what happens when you get discouraged. That's what happens when you get disappointed. Somebody a biblical story. And it goes something like this. It says that when I was eyes that the devil was going to put the schools up for sale. He said on the day of the sale, the tools were placed in a public um, uh, area, arena. And each being marked with a price. He said he had a lot of tools. Hatred, envy, jealousy, doubt, lying, pride, and on and on with this and there they had taken the side those two pieces of tools. They look harmless. They look insignificant. But they were well worn. They don't look like they were, they were valued much at all. But the price of these two pieces of tools was high above the price of the other. And so as the people looked through, they were buying these tools. One of the Purchaser asked, he says, Why is the price of this school so high? And the devil said, Oh, this is discouraging. Because it has been more useful to me than all the other tools that I have. Then on the say, the devil went on to say to him, to get it, I can pry open, get into the into a person's heart. But then when I get in, he said, I first heart, I can cause problems. Anything I want him to do, he said, I can't do with other people. He said, once I'm inside, I can make them do what I want. It is badly worn because I use it a lot. But I only display it because you know, I don't want it to be left where somebody has can buy it from me. People of God. Now, like I said, that's a biblical story. But if, if we borrow from that story, there are some things that God has given us to help us. If we would take it seriously, and the story says the devil took discouragement and, 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 and disappointment, and we put it on the highest list of our lives and use it as God and them for us to use as such as obedience, faithfulness. If we, if we would use these things, if we would be what God would have us to be, the people of God would accomplish more. The people in Israel, during the ministry of the prophet Ahab, they were disappointed and they were discouraged, and for the wrong reason. It says, Matthew Henry, in his commentary, says in 1586 BC, the 
Babylonians had invaded Israel. They had taken the people away to the Babylon, uh, the, the Babylon as captive. The Babylonians had destroyed Solomon's temple in Jerusalem. Fifty years, after fifty years, some of the people were allowed to return back to Jerusalem. When they arrived, they found that the temple was war. It was in disarray. It was destroyed. Therefore, the people endeavored that they would rebuild the temple. They went and stopped after just a short time after they started because of opposition from the Samaritans. You know that happens to us a lot in the house of God. You want to come to church. And maybe you start coming to church. I spoke with a lady not long. And asked us why I have to be in church for so long. Boy, she gave me a merit of reason why. Uh, I think she also used to use one of her children to talk about a uh, uh, you know, uh, job. I mean, she had been on and on and on the reason why. For 16 years, the old temple remained unfinished. They had begun to work on it, and for some reason, they stopped, and nobody had a finger to continue. Then God raised up the prophet Haggai and called the people back to their task of rebuilding the temple. But after only a month, they became discouraged once again. Once again, they wanted to quit. They were disappointed by the temple they were building, and they were discouraged in the work that they were doing. Why were they disappointed in the temple? Because the temple did not hold the same beauty of the first temple. They looked at it and said, what is this? You mean, this is the temple which you all want us to come to to worship. Take the eye, rest to them, to challenge them, and encourage them to carry on the work because God has spoken to take eye and told him that this is what I want you to do. So, uh, my dear friend, this is something that really we need to learn. He said, uh, uh, really, if it is not to our likings, a lot of times we don't want to do it. Have you ever been discouraged? Yes, I have, as I said earlier. Have you ever found yourself disappointed? Yes, I have. I believe you have too. I believe you all have. There are times when disappointment looms over us all like a dark cloud. And somebody sees you, they ask you, when was going on? Sometimes you're lost for words and for all you, you wouldn't know. I've heard people use that expression and probably I won't, maybe I don't. I believe I believe you need to acknowledge the fact. And this is just a power of life. But when it happens, there are some remedies. <coughs> I don't know about my throat. That's why I let people have to say to give me this, but I don't want to come back and say to give me this. Normally, it's such a loss in this, even in my office, when I go out, I don't buy any more. And so, if you're not yet, I'm disappointed. Forgetting all about the positive. But these 
set up for a fight, and they fight over there. He breakfast, just sitting breakfast, to buy them on his course, but for him, 50 to 80 dollars to buy. That's how cheap he was. And so we did that. I can remember that. I don't know if the people who say when they can do that, but but you can say do that, yes. But the people say, you know, I don't want to see them lying. I like how they twist the church when I tell them this story. They say, no. They say, if they, if they sound unreal, but it happened. He said, so this is what they're talking about. And they say, you see, so, so uh, not, 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 I don't know if that was a good thing, but they were wasting money. They could eat breakfast. They could eat, remember they had a pancake on Zito? You know, remember that? We had steak and ale. We had steak and lobster. We had lobster houses. We had everything on this island. Everything which you could get at Florida, you could get here back in those days. We got them in back in the days. Mm-hmm. So far, right? you see. Which goes something I'm not going to tell them about. Who on the back? Thank God for where I am at. Thank God for what I have. Mm-hmm. You see. So all they could consider was how things used to be. And they had no interest in how things are. All they were saying, boy, we used to do this and we used to do that. Have we been shamed in the church for so many years and we still yet are back yonder at the time you say, I've been saying now for 57 years. I was saying in 1964. As I said to you this morning, the man who lost my child. I was only 16 years old. I was saved. Let me tell you something. I don't want to go back to those days. No. But then I enjoy those days that you want to sit here. There's a place, if you know from Nassau, you know that the Nassau Indian people are talking about. We used to call it the dirties. We call it dirties now. Yeah. I don't know if it's happening, but it's a bit of ice cream, or something like that. Yeah. On the corner of Boyd Road, mm-hmm. and Nassau Street. Boy, I, I didn't like Wednesday night and Sunday night service. Not for church. Because you know it's about Kentucky. They don't know Kentucky was Kentucky there. Man, we're going to get out of Kentucky. My sister, when she was a big dog, my brother was a big dog, and we were driving, we used to go by drinks to get out of the circuit. You know, like I said, it wasn't drinks then, it was ice cream powder. We go there. Now, we're going to sit there, I don't know what they're doing with it now. But that's what we're going to have to sit there. We call it the good old days. But do I want to go back to that? No! One hundred times, no! I enjoyed that then! But now, I can go to the point now. Now, I can go to Panama now. Now, I can go to Paris Island now. These are better things. But was the ice cream power good? Yes, it was. I tell you that the church 2023 is not the same as the church of 1964. No, sir. I thank God for the church of 1964. But I thank God for the church of 2023. More so. Many things have changed. Many have been like a vision in the mind of God. The job of 1964. Every window was open. You better pray for the breeze to blow because you know the way being down is. All you got is a um, the breadfruit tree all around. Buildings here, a big tree here, a big tree there. You know, if you are, if you, if you can remember Meadow Street and Augusta Street. But when the summer comes, it was the summer. And I look up the church now, and this is it for his good old days. And so does one of these activists talk, but no. If you live in there, you live in there. This morning, I know somebody had it on put on a different program. I can't even know that you're a Many of those side parties before she comes inside. <laughs> when I come inside, people wait. She grabbed one of the things that she sat on. And then I see some orange water in the hospital, but I'm on remote control, and he got it. And, 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 and he ran around, and each one of you was trying to tell me, and I believe, and I, I, could, I was looking back, but I assume, I assume he saw some babies. <laughs> you know, you know, you were in the kitchen. Yeah. Can you imagine the good old days? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to remember back, driving back to the good old days. Here goes some fans. I, I was not a member of Baxter Drive, but I used to attend it. After they built the, the, um, uh, the, the new building, where the one across on the side where the school is. Then they, after, when, when they covered that building up, the, the, the building that they're in now, and, and 
Why can't they have no sin in them? The devil got ten rules. In the good old days, boy, you'd be cool and warm. That's all. They were the good old days. The people, now you, today they look at a building, they might not be as big as that, and they say, man, this old thing. Sometimes we are so tired of the past that we have no interest in the future. We, listen, we, we are tied to so much so that we don't want to let go. We are like, we are like a horse tied to a post. In the good old days. We want things to go back to the way it used to be. I have no interest in those things. When I look back and I see the car that I've done things there before, my memory is a good thing. You remember the right thing. With these Jews, memory became a curse because they as a hand that hung around their neck like an altar cross, and they could not get away from it. They remember the past so much so that they choose to live there. Paul was saying, You want to go back to that, you know what it is? 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 You've been there. I've been there. I told the story this evening as I was doing a, 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 a family devotion on, on social media this evening and I, I, my mind went back to a time. Um, and my dad took me to a paradise island and I took him over there. And um, uh, I can't remember what it was for, but I remember he used to work at the casino. And I took him over there and on our way back, when we got to the uh, apex of the bridge, he said, son, stop the car. And I stopped the car. And he said to me, he said, look, I can remember, I can remember the disc even my car as I was speaking. And, and he said, he said, all of this, I think it's like, what is it, the gospel chapter, what chapter, 22? I don't know, what that is. any or 41 of those, anyway, or verse 24, he said, what's in the problem with that? That we should gain the whole world, and lose the human soul. To him, that's what was the world. And when the bridge, when the bridge first built, if you go over that back, you can see, when you look over, you see all of the hustle and the bustle and everything. And he said, he said, I will not give, uh, I will not accept this, Outside of God. When he said that to me, I was a young man. I, I, I wasn't married yet. I was probably 19, 20 years old. I don't know. I don't know if 20 yet. I was 20, 20 years old. But I was driving him. And uh, when he said that, I was in my mind, I said, What's this old man talking about? I can see that good brother. I, I can see that good daddy. I can see the value of the work of, of, of God in contrast to the value of the work of the world. But my dad could see that. And he said, he said, this, he said, he said, man's soul is more valuable than all of this. And then he said, that's it. And for some reason, God dropped in my thoughts this evening as I was doing it on my, on my the, 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 uh, the devotion. And so I use it as an illustration uh, to, uh, to, to my kid folk. Every week I do a five to six, uh, six, to six minutes. The devotion for them. I'm doing it for some time. And so, once in a while, thoughts will come to my head. And so, I said, and, I, and my thoughts will never say, No, I will not go with the shoe house and all that. So much so that we cannot take God. We cannot trust God. So, memory is a good thing if you remember the right thing. When you hold to the, uh, to the past, so much so that you refuse to the future and the present, you are remembering the wrong thing. Verse 4 through 5. The things that we need to forget. There are some things we forget the wrong thing. Verse 4 through 5 says, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Gilead, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord. And work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Verse number 5. According to the word that I that I come with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remaineth among you, fear me not. In these verses, God reminds the people to be strong. He was with them, let them know that He was with them in the past. He was, he was there when they crossed the Red Sea. He told them they came, remember when you came out of Egypt, verse number five. I was there with you. He was their author. He was their great miracle worker. Remember, I told you this morning about the manna uh, that uh, he fed them in the wilderness. The water that he gave them from the flinty rock. He was there. Uh, the clouds that, 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 that covered them in the day.
they are from the rotting sun, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the fear of fire, the cool them at night when the temperature drops. He was there. He was there. He had always been with them. He was there during the glory days of Solomon's temple, and he with us today in this new temple. But you are to acknowledge him. Do not look at the past so much so that you forget to give him thanks for the present. He had always been there. He still remembers the promise and the covenant he had made with them 900 years earlier. He was standing by them. He was standing by his promise. He was standing by his word. God did not go back on his word of his promise to his people. He had heard the story of God, the problem of our, of our people, what the people had had to face from their past. But their God was there for them. They take it as just stories, but they did not take it as the blessings and the, and, and, and the graces of God. They had ceased to hold any real meaning for them. All they could remember is how magnificent this temple was. So much so, sometimes we think that this is their God's well. Paul reminds us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not a building, yes. We ought to be proud. We ought to take pride in how we keep this place. And I agree with that. We have to try to make sure that it's always um, uh, presentable. When, when we come into it, keep it clean and keep it presentable. But God will not dwell in this. This is the place where the temples of God meet. We are the temples of God. We have ceased to hold any real meaning for them. We were sure that the glory days had passed, passed and that God who blessed them then were gone forever. They were looking at things more than they are looking at God. Then God told them that He is still there. He is still God. My spirit remained among you. He said, For I am with you, verse number four. God said, I am still here, just like I have always been. No, there is not a temple now that over 20,000 uh, uh, 20 million dollars worth of gold that is spread over it. No, it is not a huge, magnificent temple with all of the pillars uh, that, uh, uh, that, that Solomon got from, uh, uh, from Sheba. No, he is saying Abraham is gone, Moses is gone, David is gone. Solomon is gone, the first temple is gone, but I am still God. When we remember that he is God, besides if there is none else, things still don't matter so much for us. You see, if you look at the temple built by Solomon, and they begin to compare the grandeur and the majesty, they look at the temple they were building, and they were discouraged by the difference and by the cheap material that they were using. Look, the, the grants were not there, the marbles were not there, the gold was not there. You see, they were building this temple, and therefore they became disappointed, and they became indifferent, and they became discouraged. What they could not see was that God did not see any difference because God was not looking at the building, God was looking at the people. So as far as God was concerned, this house was as much as important as the first house. It was a place to worship. It was just as prepared to dwell there as it was prepared to dwell in the early temple. It wasn't about what they used to have. It wasn't always uh, as, uh, about the temple, it was about God. But now, how ungrateful we become is no longer about God, it's about God is telling them to forget about the past. Forget about who isn't there. Forget about the things you don't have anymore. Forget about what they used to be. Those things are gone and they are gone forever. In spite of that, that, God is here. He has always been here and he will always be here. He said, I will never leave thee nor will I forsake thee. His power is still the team. Therefore, keep working. Don't look back at the past. Trust God for all that He does for us. Don't worry about who isn't there. Focus on who is. Don't um, uh, be intimidated by the 
guaranteed by the Duncan King in the circumstances of life. The Lord has never left us, and He will never leave us. As He said in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. He said, You know, be a lesson for us. We need to hear what God has for us to do with God. Intend for us to do what we desire for us to do. But don't get caught up in the trap of what it used to be. We look at how things used to be, beginning with God, and yesterday is still here. He is still the God who blesses. He said, Then David Livingston left. England, he met the uh, archbishop, the blackest archbishop. So while he was there and he was serving the African people, uh, maybe he may have made some mistakes uh, as it relates to his talent and everything else. But uh, he, uh, they went and they sent out a um, party looking for David Livingston. They didn't know whether he was alive or dead. They said he is among these heathens. And they have that, there was no communication. And so they sent out a party to look for him. And they, and they searched and they searched and they searched. Eventually, they came upon him and they said he was badly officiated. Uh, Seen a little bit, he was not eating, not too much food, and he lost uh, about tons of pounds. And I mean, and he was so sickly, so they decided to take him back to England to get medical treatment, and they did. He regained his strength and everything else. But when he was strong again, he said he had to go back to Africa. They said they were going to return back to the back of Africa where he was serving. God, and there he was. But he came to the place when David Livingston had died, and so they came for his body. And I don't know if it's a true story, I read this. They said, the African said, Give us his heart. And that's what God wants his people. God wants our heart. They said, You can take his body, but leave his heart in Africa, brethren. I come not myself, Paul says here in Philippians chapter 3, verse 15. Brethren, I come not myself to comprehend it or to gain it or to reach, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Let us not linger in the past. God stand just as ready to bless today as he did yesterday. But it is it's us who are living in yesterday. That's why we're not enjoying the blessings of today. He will meet with us, he will dwell upon us, and he will bless us today, just as he did yesterday. But do not look for the same thing yesterday. Our primary concern is that we remember what life is really about. What our life used to be. Then he changes. As long as we keep our eyes fixed on the prize. His direction will guide us. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2 reads, Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, not the race that is behind us, but the race that is set before us. Looking on to Jesus, not looking back from where we came from. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We keep our eyes on the prize today. Thank God for yesterday. Thank God for the things that we enjoyed yesterday. But what about today? We go back to compare. He says in verse 3, and how do you see it now? He said, It's not is it, is it not in your eyes a comparison of it as a thing? Message, what, what verse number three is saying, that's about what the verse is saying. He said, when you look at this building, and you look at that building, what used to be, all you got are memories of what it used to be. You look at this building, you say, man, this is crap. But it's not. The old people wept when they saw the new temple. And as they remembered the old one in their eyes, the new temple was less than nothing. 
And that's why people get disgruntled. That's why people get disappointed. And that's why people get discouraged because they keep looking back. You see that it was not worth the time and the energy. They hated it. They wanted nothing to do with it. Therefore, they did not want to complete it. They were not careful. They, they would do nothing. We are not careful, we get caught up in the crowd. And sometimes I remember when a lot of times I, when I do marital counseling, when, when uh, sometimes husband and wives are having problems, and uh, I'm trying to see if I can patch their differences up when it comes to me. And, and, uh, and, uh, and on, both, and on both sides of the aisle, sometimes the wife will say, Well, I don't know why you can't do it, but I'm good. Boy, I know me too. You don't compare. You know, when I hear about my own people, I feel like that. For example, I, 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 I used to do that in the church. I feel like that. Yeah. But sometimes that's what, we, that's what we do. But I'm not careful. You say, you know, why do you have to be a sister Mary? You don't know sister Mary. Hope you're watching. <laughs> why? You know, you don't compare. No, God says stop. Give God thanks for what you have. You are what you are by the grace of God. We compare our husband, we compare our children, we compare our church, we compare our school, we compare everything. So one day the man who was a pot cake dog was walking past 
The devil shepherd, the mama, the devil shepherd, and the body. You know, and I got that big devil shepherd. But when the devil shepherd comes to the market, guess what he did? Put some shit behind his leg. And he walked around the door. Oh, oh, oh. Then on the market, he leaned back in. He said he was, the, the forte was so determined, even though he was getting beaten, but he never quit. He didn't run from the fight. He knows all of the fight, but the devil said, the devil said, man, this devil said, I ain't going to put him no more. Because he was so, the, uh, the beast said, my son, you were always about me. You don't quit. Not because of what you experience in the person, you don't quit. Remember when Jesus was about to leave, as he tried to bring us to close, in John chapter 21, in verse 20 to 22, Jesus was with all of his disciples, you know, and so, uh, uh, excluding Judas Iscariot, and now he was encouraging them to go on with the work. Well, he looked, he turned to Peter, he said, Peter, and when he talked to him, he said, he said to him, he said, Lord Peter said, uh, feed my sheep. He said to Peter again, feed my sheep. And then after a while, he asked him, he said, do you love me? Do you love me? Peter got a little bit upset. Because the Bible didn't say what I said. Just based on Peter's answer. Oh, you know I love you. Oh, well, that Peter's already son. But then, in verse 20, then Peter turning about to see the disciple whom, he, whom Jesus loved, following, they also leaned on his breast and suffered and said, Lord, which is, uh, 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 said, Lord, which is he that betrayed me? Peter seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Notice verse number 32. Then, um, Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then you make a big decision. Sometimes you want to see, you want to know what other people are going to be doing when you, when you, you get so caught up. So much so. In verse number 9 of our text says, The glory of this latter house, we can pretend that it's now, shall be greater than of the former. Oh, isn't that something? He didn't say the beauty here. He said the glory. Man looking at the beauty, they're looking at the upper of the earth. God looking at the heart, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. This house that you are discouraged about being built, this place that you are disappointed in, God said, my glory will be greater. Sometimes we are so caught up in the edifice or on the looks of the building, the facade of the building, that we forget what comes. We are not careful. We will be just like this. Looking at those glory days, we are not careful. We can become uh, a source of discouragement uh, to others also because we, 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 we concentrate more on the building that we do the worship. We are not careful. We can be so against everything that is new and different that we end up discouraging people around us to kill their enthusiasm. Think about it. Brother Carl Bacon, missionary we support, sent me some, some uh, videos and some photos of some people of, that, in Africa that we, the churches that we uh, helped to establish. You know they're sitting on the ground. They're sitting on the ground. Hundreds of people sitting on the ground to hear what God preach. They're building the buildings. Just to make sure buildings they're putting up. And they are rejoicing. They are glorifying God. You and I go there, Lord, I don't want one of our sons to go to these fancy church. But we hear them. And then you know, and probably I know I know some of those people are very hospitable. They probably give us something else, something to sit on. But nevertheless, but then yeah, there's nothing to sit on. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember when they were the Jews in my sky, you know, back in mm -hmm. the day. We had to stay, we had to call it a distraction, but they, you know, man, during a 
don't sit down and get on my the cruise. We're going to get dirty. God is not interested in our beautiful dress and our nice suits. God is interested in our hearts. We ought to be clean. We ought to be decent. But I'm saying, when you put that over the things of God, then you are doing your own thing. You can kill the enthusiasm of others for the work of the Lord by being negative toward anything that isn't the same as it was 50 years ago. As I told you this morning, you know, I'm not. Yes, sure. 